where we are today, we're at the um, 2015 Milan Village Art School Spoon Gathering and this is the uh, ninth year that we've had it. It started in 2007 in the cities in, uh, down in St Paul. It was uh, actually held in someone's backyard at that stage. There was only about 15 or 20 people showed up for that. And uh, we used to have an instructor here at the school. His name was Frank Foltz and uh, he was a spoon carver and it was his dream to have the uh, first inaugural spoon carving festival and uh, he held it down the cities and in the second year they moved it out to Milan um, which was 2008 and uh, we've had it here ever since and uh, the interesting thing about this is that it's the uh, first one of its type in the world. Um, it started here uh, it's actually spoon carving as a Scandinavian art form though it's people all over the world carve spoons but uh, the style that is taught around here is generally the Scandinavian spoon carving and um, so uh, that's what you're going to see when you walk around and look at what people are doing but everybody has their own style um, it's not all traditional Scandinavian spoon carving but uh, Frank's, Frank Foltz was the founder and uh, it was kind of his dream to do this but unfortunately he passed away uh, a week before the 2009 spoon carving um, so but we we um, you know, we attributed this, this whole success to him. The Milan Village Art School is a, is a folk school, um, basically, and uh, we teach the folk arts, and this would be considered a kind of a folk art. And this whole area here was, um, was, uh, was Norwegian immigrants, and when the immigrants came from Scandinavian countries, whether Sweden or Norway, they brought these arts with them. So when, when they started carving spoons, you know, they carved spoons out of wood because they needed to have eating utensils. Um, they, you know, they didn't have knives and forks and, and so forth. And, and as it developed, it became more of an art form. Now, now that we've carved spoons, we're getting, we're getting really good at carving spoons, so let's decorate the handles, let's uh, do all things like coal rosing. Uh, there's, uh, they might paint them in different ways, they'll carve them in different ways. So everyone is a little bit different. I think uh, what draws people to start with, to spoons, is that it's not intimidating. They're not trying to carve something that has to look like a face or a figure or a picture. Everybody knows what a spoon looks like. And, and even if it's humble and not decorated, well, that's what you'd buy at Kmart, so that's not a problem. And they know they can make a nicer job than that. So there's that confidence. And I think more and more as people love homemade and the kitchen and cooking, it just seems to fit. And in our culture today that's so digitized, people just, there's more and more hunger for things that are made with love and care and by hand and out of natural material like a branch off your tree. And, and that's just natural that people want to get together because it's quiet. There's not noise, there's no machines, no electricity. And so you can quietly uh, sit together around the fire. The spoon is a, it's a, uh, it, represents friendship and family and gathering together. Uh, that's why this was called the Spoon Gathering. So it's people coming from everywhere who are either interested in spoons or uh, they collect spoons or they carve spoons. And so it's a gathering of people coming together. So it, it's a symbol of eating and friendship and family and community. Yeah. Well, it's unique because it was the first one of its type in the world. There's probably about another four or five in the United States which has sprung up. They're also called spoon gatherings, but they all kind of uh, you know, attribute you know, their gathering to this first one that was here. And then about three or four years ago, there was one which was started in England uh, called the Spoon Fest, which is the first international uh, spoon carving festival in the world but they modeled the Spoon Fest on the Spoon Gathering in Milan. These are carvers who all come together um, and, and it's, a, it's a weekend for everybody to network and meet up each year and uh, kind of learn from each other. 
I'm inspired by Scandinavian spoons, but um, and I've traveled there. I've studied museum uh, archive collections, um, and you know the history of the spoon is a long and complex one. So I, I do know it. I don't know. It's probably more than we can talk about here, though. <laughs> I like I like the. Uh, I like to come here because of the camaraderie amongst just friends and fellow spoon carvers, um, sharing techniques and talking about wood and spoon design. Um, I don't get to talk about that kind of thing all the time, so it's nice to come here and hang out with other folks the same. Uh, around the, the festival grounds, uh, we would see lots of small groups, little vignettes that way, often in a shady spot. Uh, we'd see some with a large stump with an axe hewing from a branch to get down close. Others would be doing very fine work like this. Others would be relaxing and watching. And then there's always the demonstrators. I started coming here on its third year. Um, I was always interested in spoons and spoon carving and looking for other people to relate to, other people that did and, and carve spoons. And I was searching the internet and I saw a little something on this event and I came down. I started focusing on wooden spoons because uh, as a woodworker, I was looking for something simple to make um, with uh, a small amount of tools. And um, spoons was one of those things that uh, um, seem to make sense. I carve spoons to make a living, I'm a professional, and also to turn people on to um, using the natural green wood as we call it, so starting with a, a, just a raw tree or chunk of a tree, um, turning that into a utilitarian object. So it's kind of twofold, to make money as a living, but also to expose people to um, how we can relate to it in a different way, in a useful way. I'm getting choked up because I'm, I'm thinking of the guy that died that started this, so you have to give me a vote to get over that. Wow, he asked it because that's the depth of it. Hmm. Now I might have to do this two or three times. We'll see. Hmm. I think the spirit of this festival is amazingly the continuation of Frank Fultz that founded it. One of the most uh, gentle giving people I've, I've ever known and delighted in life. Uh, and he loved having people come together quietly. And even though he's gone now, that has continued. And people that they come from, I don't know, 10 or 15 states, never heard of each other. They all just sit quietly and they're just that instant comfort with each other doing something they have in common because it's of a similar attitude. It's, it's just it's the community, it's quiet, it's delight, it's craft, it's laughter. And it's the best I could sum it up is it's a continuation of whose who Frank life was and in, in this community today, it's still there. I think that they would be experiencing something that they're not gonna experience anywhere else. Uh, or very limited places in the United States at the moment. There's lots of carving festivals on, but there's nothing like this. It's just very unique and uh, it's a great atmosphere. We really look after them because we're not very big. We, we can really um, spend time and make sure everybody has a really enjoyable time on the weekend. And I think spoon carving is, uh, you know, it touches on what I mentioned earlier about uh, it's a simple toolkit, you know, you don't need a lot of space, you don't need a big shop, you don't need expensive equipment. You can start with just a simple axe and a few knives. And so it really, and humans work with their hands. I mean, it's part of who we are, how we've evolved. And so people crave working with their hands more than just this or, or this. And I think, you know, all of those combined, I think is why it's becoming more and more, um, becoming more and more mainstream.
This program on Pioneer Public Television is funded by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund with money from the Vote of the People of Minnesota on November 4th, 2008. Additional support provided by Mark and Margaret Yakel Juline in honor of Shalom Hill Farm, a nonprofit rural education retreat center in a beautiful prairie setting near Wyndham in southwestern Minnesota. ShalomHillFarm.org. The Arrowwood Resort and Conference Center, your ideal choice for Minnesota resorts, offering luxury townhomes, 18 holes of golf, Darling Reflection Spa, Big Splash Water Park, and much more. Alexandria, Minnesota. Explore hundreds of lakes, trails, and attractions for a great vacation or a place to hold an event. ExploreAlex.com. Tri-State Brain and Spine Institute. With locations in Alexandria, Edina, Crookston, and Maple Grove. Doctors dedicated to evaluating and treating all types of brain and spine problems, no matter how complex. 